righty, all righty. Let's make sure that everything is good to go. Is the stream coming up? Is the stream online? Yep, the stream is online. So let's get this started then. Hello everybody and welcome to the Crosspad Castle. I'm Sir Crosspad, the Pink Knight. And I'm Rogue, the mischievous Rogue. And we're going to play us some I Love You, Colonel Sanders, a finger-licking good dating simulator. <laughs> Hello Felipe, welcome. We appreciate you stopping by, but uh, we're going to get started. This, this game is a crazy intro, so that's why we didn't just jump right into it, but here goes. Wait, right now? You don't want to yes. wait? Yes. Here okay. goes. Whenever Rogue okay. is ready. <laughs> Almost there. Just boot it up. <laughs> From zero to 100 in no seconds flat. <laughs> Turkey Doodle Doo! It's a freaking right, let's chicken. Go. Look at all these chickens. <laughs> Music is way too loud. <laughs> Sorry about blowing out your speakers, guys. It's Fishy Sanders. <laughs> Make chickeny nom nom. Oh my god. He's going Super Saiyan. This is amazing. On a salt shaker. And horrible at the same time. <laughs> Felipe says, let the fried chicken fly. Yes, indeed. Let's go. Someone needs to put a DDLC mod of this. <laughs> Felipe uh, says, I'm laughing so hard at this. Oh, God. Someone someone does a DDLC mod crossing this and You're going <laughs> and to be the date. <laughs> yeah, Protag is, is now Colonel Sanders confirmed. Yes. Oh, what a lovely biscuity, chickeny loading screen we have here. Mmm, yum, 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 yum. They make the food look really good. I'll give them that much. <laughs> anyway. You sleep softly as the morning sun casts a warm glow through the window of your modest student apartment. The world is peaceful and serene. You could stay in the moment forever. I think there's BTS in the corner on the left side. <laughs> of course there is. Or you could wake up now, now, now! Your first day of culinary school is it? Is hold on. Oh, your first day of culinary school is no time to sleep in. Smack that clock. Stay in bed forever. <laughs> you slept through the school year and gave up on a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to meet Colonel Sanders. Is Monica gonna kill us now? Game over already. You might not be cut out for this. <laughs> Awesome. A tremendous, typical Crosspad Castle start for this one. Yep. <laughs> Total degenerates. We're not getting out of bed under any circumstances. You seem sloth here as a mother. The world is peaceful and slayer. Serene, you can step in. Or you can wake up now, now, now. Your first day of culinary like school is in no time to sleep in. Of all time. Smack the clock and up and at him. Lying in bed, you stare at the ceiling, thinking about everything that awaits you at the prestigious University of Cooking School. Academy for Learning. That poster is like... U-C-S-A-L. No, no one sees the poster? It's on the left hand side. <laughs> Samurai Chicken. Your mind begins to wander. Who will be there? What will you cook? What should you wear? Time begins to fly by and you find your imagination getting away from you. You'll need to take this seriously or you'll allow yourself to daydream a bit thinking about the future. I'm gonna daydream. It's here, finally, your first day of culinary school. So many dishes to prepare, so many students to meet. Your mind is swimming with possibilities when you realize you're running late. You grab a biscuit and burst out the door in a hurry. Nom, 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 delicious. Just what you needed to wake up those taste buds. Yikes, you're in such a hurry, in fact, that you forgot to put on any deodorant before running out the door. You're sweating buckets as you rush to arrive on time. I, I love uh -oh. how they're using words like buckets and <laughs> biscuit. Yep. And like KFC stuff. Standing in the quad, you gaze upon the magnificent University of Cooking School Academy for Learning. 
Here comes your lifelong best friend forever, Miriam. She's the most adorably awkward person you've ever met, and you absolutely love her for it, just like Rogue. <laughs> no one can see the glare I'm giving you. <laughs> anyway. Good morning, Sir Crossbud. Are you excited for your first day of the rest of our lives? Actually, I'm... Because I sure am excited, a little nervous. Okay, okay, a lot of nervous. What the? It's just that this morning I made breakfast for myself, but, well, when I ate it, I couldn't taste any love in the food. What if I'm no good? What if I fail? Classic Miriam, raised by Master Chef parents, she's always held herself to a very high standard. Ever since we were little babies playing together and you rescued me from that quicksand box, it's been clear to me that you're the most loving, caring person I know. You're going to do great! <laughs> but with University of Cooking School Academy of Learning famous three-day one-only semesters, I'm afraid of being left behind and never catching up! Three-day only semesters? What?! A sweet girl, Miriam. A, a sweet girl, Miriam has always had a flair for the dramatic. This summer, she got so nervous about her first kiss that she chipped a tooth practicing on a mannequin. Ow. Should you pep talk her or change the subject to give her some relief? Hmm. Pep talk? Remember last month when we saw that fortune teller and had our tarot cards read? Hmm. The lady with the mask who gave me nightmares? I've been trying to forget. She said Satan was going to take my soul. <laughs> I know she looked spooky, but she was so sweet, and she told you that you were destined for great things. Remember that card with the fancy-looking tower and that other card featuring the handsome fellow in the red suit? I've been waiting for so long to meet a handsome fellow I could call my own, just like my bishy, Colonel Sanders. <laughs> And my body pill of Ronald McDonald's. Oh, God. <laughs> and I'm sure you will soon. In no time, we'll be graduating. You'll be delighting the world with your heartfelt cooking in no time, as well as your creepy penchant for Ronald McDonald body pillows. As you talk Miriam up, you can feel her nerves begin to ease. You know what? Maybe everything will be okay after that. If not, at least I have these killer bangs, and Ronald McDonald, and the King, and KFC, and my waifu, Wendy. <laughs> Wendy is a savage. Can you believe I cut them myself? You can definitely believe it. Those bangs look like lettuce. Uh, I cannot believe it. <laughs> Before you can get another word out, you're rudely interrupted when someone smacks your books and custom engraved measuring spoons out of your hands and onto the ground. Hey! It's Ashley, your arch rival. She's totally evil, but you can't help but be filled with jealousy. She can get anything she wants, and she knows it. Baka. Baka. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Ashley. A Ashley? Oh, I didn't see you there, chicken shins. You leave Sir Crasspad's shins alone. They're perfectly normal shins. Ugh, you can't stand Ashley, but even her name is annoying. You know for a fact that it's actually Ashley, but she had to add extra letters to make herself feel better than everyone. She is thick. That's all I can really <laughs> say. <laughs> Ashley is thick. If anyone here knows what perfect shins looks like, it's us. We're not going to let you We're not going to let you or your really weird insults get to us. Or your chicken thighs. Across the quad you see Ashley's best friend, <laughs> Van Van, the oh man man, God. has stopped to look <laughs> at his own reflection in the mirror. His pants are so tight. You can see him casually working out his glutes while he styles his hair. No lie, they're rocking So glutes. Ashley is like a chicken? It's like breast and legs? <laughs> is this the question? <laughs> Seems that way. And Van Van. You rang rang. You've never been sure what their arrangement is, but as long as you've known them, Ashley and Van Van have been just as close as you and Miriam, but substantially more devious. Uh-oh. 
I can't believe that University of Cooking School Academy for Learning would ever allow people like you to attend as students. I know, right? You think they just hand us our diplomas now? <laughs> uh, maybe hire us as professors. You amateurs could learn from us. With the first day of school about to start, there's just no time to properly tell these two off, so you resist the urge. Let's go, Miriam. Uh, psh. See you later, losers. As you approach the door, you see a goofy-looking kid pushing hard against the window directly next to him. <laughs> what the heck? Why did he fart? Oopsie. <laughs> I think it's broken. You reach forward and easily pull the door open. Uh, that should do the trick. I love you. I think you mean thank you? My name is Pop. I was named after my Pop Pop. He's old. Okay. Could someone like this also be a student at this school? He must be one heck of a chef. Also, his name tag clearly says Bob. But I guess he's reading it upside down. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Hi, Pop. I'm Sir Crosspad. So... Are you going to make me hold this door all day, or... Uh... Nope! And with that, the young man walks into the building ahead of you. Aww, is it just me, or is he kind of cute? I think it's just you. You both shrug your shoulders before following him into the building. You stand at the edge of the room, unsure where to sit. Other students wander in and keep themselves busy chit-chatting. A scruffy-looking pooch takes his place at the podium at the front of the class. Adorable. That, do you want to uh, be sprinkled? Let me see. What what kind of voice should I give him? Uh, not an annoying one. Okay. No high-pitched, weird like. I meant this is my voice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Here. <laughs> now, now, quiet down, everyone. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Who is this unreasonably cute pup, and why is he in our culinary class? You must be Sprinkles, head instructor and CEO of USCAL. UCS. UCSAL. Please call me Professor Dog. I may be cute and little and fluffy, but I still demand respect. Woof! What? A cute dog is our professor? This is the best school ever! I guess only a dog's no okay, can't Oops, read that. Sorry. Out of nowhere, wind begins to rush around you as a swirl of cherry blossom petals fills the air inside the classroom. <laughs> oh, goodness. I'm chilly. Someone close the window. And then... He walks in. <laughs> oh, look at that handsome face. You're immediately swept up in the aura of this new student and his remarkable goatee. Who knew anyone could be so handsome? Oh my Time gosh. stands still. <laughs> <laughs> He's all swole. He's got big old, big old biceps and some pecs. It's him. It's... If it isn't my favorite student, Harland... Colonel Sanders interrupts Sprinkles, sorry, Professor Dog, before he can finish his sentence. <laughs> Please, call me Colonel. Colonel Sanders. A hushed murmur rolls through the classroom as Colonel Sanders walks down the aisle of desks. Suddenly, the room is sweltering. Is it just hot in here, or, or is Colonel Sanders just super hot or something? Oh my god. Sweat begins to bead across your brow. You feel like everyone is looking at you, and you're not entirely wrong. And this over here must be sweaty sweats a lot. <laughs> Maybe we should uh, open that window back up before faucet pits melts into a puddle and evaporates entirely. He's like Jojo. <laughs> Hold on a second. Nobody talks to my friends like that. You two both know my name. We were in kindergarten class. And what is with your really weird insults? Besides, when Sir Crosspad sweats, it's not gross. It's beautiful. Look at the shimmer. I'm like Edward in the sunlight. Ew. <laughs> 
Colonel Sanders, beautiful angel that he is, stands before you smiling gently, his hand outstretched. Boy, howdy, this classroom gets hotter than a Kentucky fryer. Please, use my handkerchief. My brain, I can't stop staring at it. I don't know, my brain's like <laughs> having this association. It's like, is this really? His arms are so disproportionate in that sprite. You freeze up. Colonel Sanders is talking to you. <laughs> oh my God. Wait, Colonel Sanders is talking to you about how sweaty you look? You're completely mortified, and I didn't put on deodorant this morning. This can't be your first interaction. What if he never forgets this moment? How will you respond? Uh. Take the handkerchief. I'm gonna take it. You stretch out your hand, and Colonel Sanders places a fine silk handkerchief in it. I don't know. Maybe we, we should play this as a tsundere. Like, I, <laughs> no, I don't like you, Colonel Sanders. I don't like you. <laughs> it's so beautiful, you hesitate to press it to your face. But when you do, the feeling is transcendent. Ugh. Got those brain sparks going off. It has its natural scent Oh, my it. God. What did he, smells, where did he put it? <laughs> it smells of the most delicious chicken you've ever smelled. What smells <laughs> like chicken on his body? <laughs> I'm not being super creepy at all right now. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Dog steps in to settle the class down <laughs> and set some ground rules because it's getting a little too sweaty in here. All right. Welcome to University of Cooking School Academy for Learning, the greatest culinary academy in the world. The birthplace of culinary legends past, present, and future. Many challenges await you. There will be tears. There will be blood. There might even be really adorable tiny food. And when all is said and done, there will be a battle. Shokugeki no Soma! You will lift your sporks and complete, compete in the broom cooking arena. Just then, another student enters the classroom and interrupts the professor's rousing speech. Hi guys, sorry I'm late. I hope everyone had a good summer. I really miss... Quiet! Late to class is bad enough, but interrupting my monologue? You're on the fast track out of here, young man. Are you sure you're even in the right place? Uh, don't you recognize me? This is my third year in this school with you as my teacher. Everyone stares at him blankly. What? Does no one remember me? Uh, uh, I'm... You're expelled if, you're, if you utter one more word before I finish. Let that be a lesson to you students. The tardiness is unacceptable. Even Clank made it here on time, rolling halfway across town on his tiny wheels. Huh? Clank? You turn to see the student Sprinkles is referencing, who appears to be some sort of industrial kitchen appliance. Uh oh, okay. <laughs> the class bursts into laughter. <laughs> oh, Clank, you rascal. Sprinkles walks in the classroom as everyone stands in silent, silent obedience. When he gets to you, he oh. lifts something that I didn't read. Yeah, it doesn't look like we can go back, so be careful. Hmm, your diet is lacking. Based on what I'm picking up here, you definitely need a multivitamin. You should be taking better care of yourself. You've never had a talking dog as a teacher before, but Sprinkle's reputation for being smart but tough is well known. <laughs> Guard Eagle says, bro, I'm getting Doki Doki PTSD flashbacks. <laughs> You decide to try and butter him up by giving him a treat from your pocket. You guys want to give him a chicken snack, a rubber, a rubber ball. ball, or a beef treat? What you want? But what kind? You what do you guys say? Be chicken. I give him. <laughs> El Felipe, uh, El <laughs> Felipe El Savage says, "Forget Sanders. Clank his waifu." waifu. <laughs> I'm gonna go for chicken snack. All right, chicken snack it is. You reach beneath your apron and return with a chicken snack in your hand. Sprinkle's eyes go wide as he locks onto it. Everyone says beef. beef. Uh-oh, too late. His favorite. Nom, nom. 
Well, 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 I think there might be some competition for a new star student. The furry professor immediately devours the snack, leaving your hand slick with a coating of warm doggy drool. Ugh. You see the other students eyeing you jealous jealously, but pay no mind to them. If they wanted to succeed in life, they should have learned the importance of carrying a range of dog treat flavors on them at all times. Settle down, young chefs. Take your seats and prepare to have your minds open to the amazing possibilities of culinary creation. As everyone rushes to claim their favorite seats, you're left standing at the front of the room. Only two options remain. Hmm. Hey, Sir Crosspad, there's still a seat here. It seems that no one has claimed this seat next to me, if you're interested. Hmm. Go with the, go with our best friend or go with the colonel, who we've never met before, but he's super hot. It smells like with chicken. With an H-A-W-T. Hot. <laughs> so hot. <laughs> Which one, guys? You gotta pick. Pick quickly or we're gonna pick for you. <laughs> yeah, I want to sit by the JoJo person and like, what the hell are <laughs> sit they? Sit by up? Van Van. Yes, I want to sit by Ashley Van and Van Van's, Van Van's bizarre adventure. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, does that mean we're Dio Nani? <laughs> uh, we'll sit by the Colonel. Okay, we're we'll sitting by the Colonel. Okay, so we got one vote for Colonel, one vote for Sanders. For, for best frond. Best frond. Move to take your seat by Colonel Sanders. It appears he brought no books, pens, or pencils. However, his perfect upright posture shows off a seriousness that makes you confident in his desire to learn. Thanks for offering me this seat. I've only had two rules. Do all you can and do it the best you can. It's the only way you'll ever get that feeling of accomplishing something. Guardian Ghoul, we smelled his chicken handkerchief. How can we not sit next to him? <laughs> that is so inspiring. A little off topic, if you ask me, but okay. As soon as you've settled into your seat, the professor makes an announcement. Think fast, it's time for a pop quiz. You evil dog. Yay, a, po a quiz about me. This incredibly important and surprisingly short quiz will tell me if you are ready for life at culinary school. Keep your knives sharp and your focus sharper. Here comes question number one. Oh man, such intensity in those eyes. Is he gonna thwack us in the tuchus with that there spatula? If train A is traveling to point B and train B is traveling to point A, how important is it to wash your hands before cooking? Uh, extremely. Yeah, Looking at you, no. Pop. That's right. Hello, Jesse Roleplays. Welcome. We're always happy to have new viewers in here. Forest is to tree as chicken is to... Forest is to chicken is to... Night vision goggles. <laughs> Feather? That's right. Indeed, that's right. What is the most efficient eating utensil ever created? A meat tenderizer. <laughs> a, a spork. It has to be a spork. That's right, because that's all we have at KFC. <laughs> what food is best for a broken heart? Camel meat. <laughs> Anything as long as it's prepared with love and not too much salt. That's right. Is Sprinkles a good boy? Ooh, yes, I think Sprinkles is a good boy. His best boy. That's right. <laughs> Woo! Your total score is perfect score! Five out of five, because we're the best! Wow, be honest, did you cheat? Did you look it up to see that Colonel Sanders has been watching your ta you tally your score? He's impressed. Ooh, ooh, Senpai noticed us! <laughs> senpai! Ooh, Senpai! Oh, Colonel Senpai! <laughs> <laughs> God. <laughs> I know we just met, but I have to confess. I think you have a beautiful brain. 
Hot diggity, Sir Crosspad. You just scored some major Colonel Sanders points with that performance. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to make the double on Chandra, I was going to say. <laughs> PG-13 stream. Oh, goodness. May I have your attention, students? I have an important announcement to make. Time for lunch! Wow, the cafeteria is as nice as any restaurant you've ever eaten at. It makes sense that a school dedicated to cooking would also be serious about eating. A delicious fragrance wafts through the room and tickles the end of your nose. Your mouth waters. Mm. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, fried chicken. Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> Do you smell that? That's must, uh, that, that bleh, bleh. Do you smell that? That must be our lunch. It smells crazy good. Everyone, can, can I have your attention? Is this about lunch? No, I just wanted to apologize for my tardiness. You see, I was, uh... Howdy, folks. I'd like to make an announcement. Hey, hey, I was, um... Um, it's about lunch. Everyone cheers! Yay! Woo! But, but, I, uh... Shh! <laughs> lunch! 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 <laughs> <laughs> she said, shh. In honor of the new semester, I have prepared something special to share with everyone for lunch. Aha! Uh -huh. That must be what I smell. I smelled. That must be the smell I smelled. <laughs> the smelly smell that smells smelly. Indeed, that smell is not anchovies like it was in SpongeBob, but... You hold your breath waiting to see what food this mysterious student has created. You've heard that he's very talented. But were the rumors true? Hmm. Is this? Chicken. Colonel Sanders lifts a large bucket above his head. Its contents glimmer in the light. Oh, so much oil. Piled high are huge pieces of chicken breaded and fried to a crispy golden finish. The aroma envelops you, and you begin to feel warm and safe. Con Colonel Sanders has filled a bucket with chicken? What a novel concept. Hmm. Your stomach begins to grumble as if to say, Stop thinking and start eating! <laughs> for years I have been developing a secret recipe for the perf perfect chicken. Perfect fried chicken. Perfect. <laughs> I'm in the mafia. No, no, no. It's it's part of Louisiana. Yeah. Puff, perfect? <laughs> perfect. M by my calculation, nothing less than 11 herbs and spices are required to achieve the perfect balance of flavors. In Kentucky, but throwing a little bit of Cajun in there. I don't know why. You look around and notice that every other student has a pen and paper and is scribbling notes as fast as they can. But that's all I'll say about that. What? You think we want your stupid secret recipe, dude? Pshaw! Nah, my dude, nah. I'm just, uh, drifting a last- uh, uh, drafting a last will and testament in case, uh, one of those ingredients is, uh, poison. Got him? He looks around nervously to see if anyone else is laughing at his sick burn. <laughs> you wait to see what a zinger Ashley is prepared to follow up, but she suddenly takes a different approach. Mm. Yeah, and I was just like writing in my diary. Dear diary, today I smelled something beautiful. I knew at the moment that only the hands of a true gentleman could fry chicken so tender. You see her body language change from bitter and evil to sweet and innocent as she slides closer to Colonel Sanders. She realizes that he is destined for greatness and fame with cooking skills like this. She wants him all to herself. <laughs> mm. Oh, please. Mm. Well, Van Van, the man man, if you don't want any. I'll take this. I'll take his. Whoa, hold on. I mean, I guess I'll try it. 
He takes one bite and his eyes grow wide. He starts contorting his face and he, as he tries to hold in his pure exhilaration. And his and hair is unimpressed. straight up. <laughs> Easy now, there's enough for everyone. Please, my fellow classmates, dig in. <laughs> you take one of the pieces of fried chicken out of the bucket and sink your teeth into it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. it's amazing! Tasting Colonel Sanders' food transports you to another dimension with an eyeball at the center of a galaxy, I guess. Alone with your taste buds gripping a drumstick in your hand, you float weightlessly. Hmm. Focus your mind and meditate on this moment. Try to identify every flavor, savor the moment, and everything that it tells you about Colonel Sanders' culinary heart. Swim toward the light. Somewhere up ahead, a bright light beckons you. This is Monica. What the heck? Did Monica hack the game? The flavors are so intense, you become wrapped up in them, unable to resist. You reach toward the light. It grabs your hand and pulls you closer. Closer! Until your fingertip connects with the end of everything. You are forever lost in the land of tender fried chicken bliss. Your mind dissolves. There is no Sir Crosspad now. There is only herbs and spices. Though Miriam tries to revive you, she cannot. Game over. <laughs> we died of tasty chicken, everyone. The tastiest <laughs> death of all. All right, let's try this again. So first we sniffed his chicken hanger handkerchief. Mm -hmm. And now we're... Is it going to... Is it Okay. All right, so we just got to go through the cafeteria sequence. Okay, I'm just going to skip. Yeah, we're going to skip this. ahead. We're going to pick the right choice. I mean, is that the wrong choice? Is it wrong uh -huh. to just love chicken so much that you die? Or did, did Colonel Sanders actually murder us? I think he murdered us. <laughs> what? Oh, my gosh. That's ridiculous. Doki Doki KFC Literature Club. <laughs> <laughs> All right, dig in. Take one of those. Sink your teeth in. It's amazing. Tasting Colonel Sanders' food, which transports you to another dimension. All right, so we're going to savor, savor the, the moment. moment. The flavors in your mouth are beautiful, pure, heavenly. Okay, I feel like this is trying to brainwash me. <laughs> <laughs> what a guy. Alone with the flavors, you feel something that can only be described as love. For a man? For a flavor? Are they the same? Mm -hmm. After tasting his food, you try to get some one-on-one -on -one time with Colonel Sanders. You approach Colonel Sanders. Colonel Sanders smiles ever so softly as you approach. He stops what he is doing and allows you to break the silence. Audio. No. No. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. All right, we're going to hold on. We'll be right back. Just let us reboot everything. All right, we should be back, guys. Sorry for the technical difficulties, but uh, let's continue forward. Okay, so if you didn't hear me before, Colonel Sanders smiles ever so softly as you approach. He stops what he's doing and allows you to break the silence. Colonel, I wondered if I could talk to you for a second. Anything for a fellow chef. What exactly was on that chicken? <gasps> How bold to come out and ask. It's an idea I had for a new combination of flavors that will make me, f make me my fortune and establish my legacy for all time as I open a chain of highly successful fried chicken restaurants. No big deal. Where did he get that chicken stick? <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness. Let, let's let's try and stay away from his chicken stick. <laughs> <laughs> it's just you and me here talking. I can keep a secret. In fact, I've got some of my own that I'd be willing to trade. Hello, Sans the Skeleton. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> Go on live chat? Is the live chat not working? So everyone can see you, huh? <clears throat> I 
Oh, weird. Why wasn't it on? Okay, that's weird. Uh, sorry about the chat, guys. I fixed it. Oh, well. <clears throat> What's the rush? The semester is only getting started. I've got two more whole days. We've got two more whole days to get to know each other. He's clearly not going to give up easily, but it doesn't hurt you to be persistent. You know what they say about secrets, Colonel? Shouldn't learning be fun? Aww. You've got Moxie, I'll give you that. Colonel Sanders looks both ways to make sure you're truly alone and leans in. You can feel his warm breath as he whispers. Just one ingredient. But you can't tell. I use boop. <laughs> it's something my great grandmother taught. Hmm. What do you think he's using? I don't know, but whatever it is, it's redacted. Boop. Wow. You've ne you'd have never have guessed that. In fact, you're not even sure where you get you'd get some if you searched. Where do you think we can find some boop, guys? We need to put it inside of our chicken. While you're wrapped up in that huge revelation, you notice that Colonel Sanders has disappeared. While everyone else is still in the cafeteria, you decide to look for him. You find Colonel Sanders outside, standing in the quad. Oh, it's you again. Howdy. Sometimes I like to come outside and look at the school buildings. I think about how my story will continue on after I've graduated. It sounds like you have big plans. Well, that's oh, it. it sounds like you have big plans. Ah. He's brainwashing you to talk like him. <laughs> I dare say the biggest. I will leave my mark on this world. You can bet on that. Alone together for the first time, you figure now is the perfect moment to show your personality to him. Uh, wow him with a big idea to add an additional ingredient that really spice things up. Hmm. I'd say modest but thoughtful is the best approach. We're so humble. <laughs> well, I just wanted to tell you that I really enjoyed your food. Now you've got his attention. Ah! Those haunting silver eyes. He's staring in their souls. <laughs> He's going to fry them and cover them in gravy. <laughs> The flavors were complex but comforting. The interplay between salty, savory, and peppery, it was perfect. I appreciate the compliment, Sir Crosspan. Yes, indeed I so, do. So, wait, hold on. Are, are they seeing, like, on YouTube, just... Let's just pause for a second. What? Can you refresh? Can you guys see us? Like, I mean, not see us. Can you hear us? Because uh, our, our stream cut out for a second. Okay, they hear us, so I guess we're fine. You should just refresh. Uh, oh, okay. Sorry, right. we're, we're going to refresh the page because I don't know. It looked like we were way off for a second, but it looks like we're not. All right, continuing forward. I appreciate the compliment, Sir Crosspath. I'm sure you'll be a big success. No, you can't see, uh, see us. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean... Maybe in the future. You can see us in spirit, maybe. <laughs> sure you'll be a big success. I know we've only met today, but I'm starting to get the same feeling about you. We should head back inside. The next lesson starts soon. You step into the massive cooking arena where the afternoon lesson will take place. Each student gets an oven and all the tools in and ingredients they could need. Suddenly, Gordon Ramsay steps out. Where's the lamb sauce? <laughs> Not really, it's just Miriam. Look at this place, it's magnificent. Finally, we get to show our stuff. Wait a second, oh no. We have to show our stuff. Wait, what if I blow it? You're not going to blow anything, except maybe kisses to the crowd of fans you're going to earn with your signature adorable tiny food creations. Welcome students to the cooking arena. 
For today's lesson, we'll be cooking with partners. Hurry up and pair off! Naturally, Miriam looks over at you, but unable to control yourself, you pounce on Colonel Sanders. What? We're ditching. She's oh, no, no oh, ditch we, your best friend. We, She'll pull a theory and we're done. Oh, and we pounce on Colonel Sanders from behind. How compromising this is. <laughs> hey, Colonel, would you like to tackle this lesson as a team? A team of two, that is? Me and you, if that wasn't clear. Want to be my partner, buddy? Huh? Sure, Sir Crosspad. I'll prepare our station. Without you as a partner, Miriam is left standing all alone. Two different students quickly take notice. Hello, new partner. Beep, beep. Hmm. Oh, my. Two potential partners. I'm so sorry, gentlemen, but I don't know who to choose. It looks like you'll have to pick for her. Friend duties can be a little awkward, but that's the price you pay for not being alone forever. Who do you want to ask to be Miriam's partner? The gross kid who burps <laughs> or the robot? I say robot waifu forever. Yeah, Clank forever. <laughs> Go get him, Clank! Sorry, Pop, but I think Miriam will be partnering with Clank today. It's okay. I already ate. It's not entirely clear if Pop has any idea what the point of school is even at this juncture. Clank is clearly excited to have some attention. He heats up and begins to roll back and forth. Beep, beep, barp. Warp, warp, barp. Beep. Hold on there, fella. We don't even know what the assignment is yet. <laughs> Technically, Clank might not have a face, but there's something charmingly earnest about him. Tissue, I hardly know you. <laughs> <laughs> Clank judders and a panel shakes loose. You get the impression that this is a sign of affection. Hmm. Looks like you two will be fine. Now it's time to focus on your own cooking classwork. All right, you two, for today's lesson, we're going to keep it simple. Pick a basic dish and divide up the steps. No chef is an island. It takes two flints to make a fire. You get the idea. Which dish do you suggest to your partner, Colonel Sanders? Steak tartare seems easy enough. It's fancy. You don't even need to cook it. <laughs> Using an octopus will blow Colonel Sanders' mind. Your grandmother's mashed potatoes are great. Do we play this safe or do we, like, be offensive? Yeah, are we, are we going to offend him with tentacles? Or are we going to... Tentacles! Go... <laughs> We're going to offend Colonel Sanders with some tentacles. I was thinking about trying something exotic. Maybe a dish that incorporates octopus in some way? I'm more of a down-home type chef myself. What about something that, go with me here, walks on land? Oh, we made him mad. <laughs> we made our husband angry. Oh, he's, he's got so much cringe. Actually, there's a certain species of octopus that, I, th that do leave the water. For instance, have you heard of an... Abdipus, uh, Adipus ac Aculatus? A Abdipus Aculatus? It leaves the water to hunt for hmm. crab. An octopus that walks upright and hunts crabs. Now I've heard everything. The world is a truly marvelous place, isn't it? Octopus crab? Sounds like you're describing one of my signature dishes. Are you trying to steal my thunder? Boys, boys, boys. What's with all the hostility? Has the competition been moved up to today? How dare you try and muscle in on my culinary territory? Nobody better touch a, a cephalopod without going through me first. I think there's been a misunderstanding. Nobody's muscling in on any mollusks. We're simply discussing today's assignment. You cut the tension in here with the chef's knife. Which makes sense, because chef's knives are usually pretty sharp. Look, we were just talking. I'll happily step back from any and all seafood. 
you know what? I'm just going to make mashed potatoes and gravy. I know my grandmother's recipe by heart. Keep the tentacles. <laughs> you begin to peel and boil potatoes and try to extricate yourself from this thorny situation. But your new rivals aren't having it. Uh-oh. Van Van, the man-man, is offended. I doubt that you even have the capabilities to work with ingredients so delicate. You should probably stick to microwavable dishes. Ooh. Burn. That's you. Oh, I thought that was you for some reason. <laughs> Unlike my friend Van Van, though he may be the man-man, I have no doubts whatsoever about Colonel Sanders' ability to concoct creations worth admiration. After all, your fried chicken is quite spectacular. Hmm. But Colonel, if you ask me, I might make a better partner for you than this thing that has positioned itself as your, at your station. How dare you insult the great pink knight! Oh. I shall have your head, Ms. Chicken Thighs! Don't you feel deep down that we cast comp uh, complimentary shadows? We fit together like a thigh and a drumstick. It makes sense. Nothing about this makes any sense, but one thing is clear, she's coming for the colonel if you don't watch out. Oh, we got competition for senpai. And if Sir Crosspad and Van Van are both so inclined to the sea, perhaps they should go there together. Ashley, are you suggesting that I share the secrets of my special saltwater sauce with this novice? I'm disappointed in all of you. Ashley's really going at you hard. You need to ask for some backup here before this thing gets ugly. Uh, let's see. Turn to Colonel Sanders, hunk of hunks in your time of need. Turn to Miriam, your forever bestie who always has you back. Sorry, Miriam, you're, under, you're going under the bus. <laughs> I'm here to learn and express myself via my cuisine, not bicker with prima donnas. Partners were chosen at the beginning of at the beginning of class, so let's all respect the format, okay? You turn to Colonel Sanders to confirm that you're on the same page. I chose Colonel Sanders, and Colonel Sanders chose me. Isn't that right? Yeah, leave her husband alone. Thought <laughs> big on. A businessman respects all fair agreements from contracts and handshakes. I took on Sir Crosspad as my partner for this activity, and I stand by it. Based on your team's behavior, I'd say you're the you're perfect for you're perfect for each other. Neither of you has Sir Crosspad's natural talent or the loyalty. Being defended by Colonel Sanders leaves you feeling proud and full of potential, but filled with determination. You look for Sprinkles in the hopes that he might step in, but he's nowhere to be found. Darn those cute corgis in a short but sturdy stature. You look down at your station and realize the tension of the moment. Your hands have been cooking on autopilot. What? Distracted by the drama, you've already crushed the boiled potatoes into a perfectly creamy mashed texture with plenty of butter and cream for flavor. It's as if your natural passion guided you through the steps you know so well while your attention is elsewhere. I know just what to do. Colonel Sanders extends his hand. He's holding beautiful white porcelain gravy boat, out of which pours a smooth brown gravy smothering your nearly finished potato dish. Mmm! Gravy flows down the mound of mashed potatoes. The results look spectacular. Granny would be very proud. You were gonna say something, Rogue? Oh, this is a very sexy <laughs> mashed potato. <laughs> I make mashed potatoes look sexy. <laughs> Colonel Sanders holds a spork out to you. You reach out and grab hold of it, but he doesn't immediately let go. The two of you stand holding the same spork. For that small moment, all of the madness and pressure in this crazy world stops. Your eyes lock. The moment is electric. Time stands still. What are you, uh, <laughs> Guardian Ghoul? What are you gonna tell Kato? I don't remember what I said. If you love something, set it free. What? Together, you dig the utensil into the mashed potatoes and lift a heaping sporkful up. When you see Ashley with a sinister look, you know she's plotting against you. 
to be with Colonel Sanders. And then, filled with rage and without thinking, you fling the spork full of mashed potatoes right into Ashley's stupid, beautiful face! Ben, Ben, do something! Do something! <laughs> Scooping up a fingerful, Van Van tastes the dripping mashed potatoes and gravy and realizes that it's delicious. Horrified by this revelation, he slinks away. Will he ever be able to cook something with so much love and integrity? Oh. Hold on right there, Sir Crockpad. We do not waste food in the broom cooking arena. Colonel Sanders, I expected better from you. If you throw one more spoonful, you'd both better be prepared to eat. Eat it from wherever it lands. Can I have potato space? <laughs> Van Van rushes back over, a covered dish in his hand. Mashed potatoes with gravy. Pathetic. In just a few minutes, I've prepared a full meal. Gaze upon my specialty. Braised tentacle of octopus in my silky saltwater sauce. Plated on a battle axe blade forged by my supreme chef ancestors. You, you've ignored me for too long. That ends now. It is I who will have the first bite and you will look on with envy. The interrupting student rushes at Van Van and swipes a bite of his signature dish right off the plate. No, don't! Something about this dish doesn't strike my nose quite right. I think the octopus was rushed and may have turned in the process. The results could be toxic. Too late. It hath been Oh my been god, eaten. it looks like he's gonna die. Oh god. I, uh, I think I left something in the oven. I don't feel so good. It killed him. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? He's dead. He's a ghost! <laughs> Everyone step back! Don't take another bite! When you look back at the plate, the rest of it is gone. You notice the tip of the tentacle being slurped up in Pop's mouth. Uh, I'm glad we can't see this. Pop winces in pain for just a moment, then is almost immediately back to his oblivious self. What? Oopsie. Tastes like poison. <laughs> the entire class is gathered to watch Pop's final moments. Shock has frozen the whole crowd. They are motionless as statues. The class bell rings, disrupting the moment and snapping everyone back to reality. It would appear that Pop's enthusiasm for trying new things despite obvious danger has inoculated him against poisons of all kinds. I ate a Tide Pod once. <laughs> I ate a Tide Pod once. <laughs> Don't do that at home, kids. I drank some bleach. <laughs> I'm, n I'm not sure the professors here make enough money. <laughs> oh, I, I hit the button. Oops. He just said ooh. In the oh, okay. Seeing that you're shaken up by that really annoying student and all his nonsense, Colonel Sanders approaches you. Approaches. I'm sorry you had to go through that. Please let me walk you home. What? Like, for real? Aw, oh, come on. I was going to date Colonel I, Sanders. I wanted to, I'm dead now, so... Yeah, crap. the only thing we missed was he said, Ooh. <laughs> you follow Colonel Sanders out of the room. At night, the school building has taken on another vibe entirely. It's dark and more than a little spooky. Mmm, spooky, scary skeletons. Colonel Sanders stands in the quads in neon glow and speaks softly. Those mashed potatoes you made in class today. Before you go on, I want you to know, they're not a great representation of my skills. I didn't even realize I was making them. They were amazing. Tasting them, it reminded me of why I became so passionate about food to begin with. Oh, he's gonna cry. No. Oh. Oh, he's getting all teary. Colonel Sanders is getting choked up. Cooking is obviously important to him in a way that you find inspiring. Now might be the perfect time to tell him you're developing feelings for him. Finger looking good. Colonel Sanders... 
Oh, okay. oh senpai, his finger <laughs> looking good. Oh my god. Oh, senpai. Okay, I love just you. stop. <laughs> yes, sir, Crosspath. There's something I need to tell you. <laughs> Hold it right there. There's something I need to tell you first. Oh, jeez. <clears throat> You see, when I was just a boy, I had a dream that one day I would be the greatest chef the world has ever seen. And every day since, I have been working toward that dream. Day and night, never stopping, never resting, also lifting a lot of weights, like so many weights. We should follow our dreams with all of our hearts. That our souls may grant them like wishes floating on a shooting star. Ugh. Hey, no, I... You... Shut up! I'm the one here to say inspirational stuff and be the star of the story! Are we forgetting that your cooking literally killed a guy? You can't prove that. Hmm. Also, I saw you kill that guy. Uh, what was his name? Somewhere in the distance, you hear a long, sad sigh. <sighs> you guys never liked me. Forget him. We're talking about me. Me, 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 me. I'm the hero. <laughs> the spork monster is here to fight a hero. What the heck? What? What? <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? I, uh, I think I left the fridge door open. Later, nerds! How dare you threaten me just as I was letting down my guard and connecting with another chef on an emotional level? Be afraid. Be very afraid of me. Oh, wait. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Do you want this? Or no. Should I do, you do okay. it. Nope. Be afraid. Be very afraid of me because I'm a monster. See? Is he rhyming on purpose or is that just a coincidence? But before you can discuss syntax any further, it's a turn based fight sequence. What will you do? <laughs> attack or defend? You decided to go on the attack. Which attack will you use? Cook with Cook love. With love. Cook with love does one damage. It just got real. That attack really upset Spork Monster. Spork Monster goes on the attack. Jab. They spit hot gravy at you. Ugh, you take one damage. Who knows? Attack. You decide to go on the attack again. It worked last time, right? Cook with love does one damage. Spork Monster won't forget this. Spork Monster is really feeling threatened by your attack. It's like Undertale. <laughs> Spork Monster focuses their mashed mind and draws in energy from Mother Earth so is itself. This, is this the other products they sell or is that what they're trying to say? <laughs> they grow larger and more intimidating. How will you respond? I say defend on that. Go on the attack again. Okay. Stab it! Which attack will you use? Pull Yuri. <laughs> Cook with love. Stab with knife. Does one damage. At this rate, the semester will probably be over before this fight is. Spork Monster is no quitter. He buffed up. Ready to rumble. Spork Monster uses Utilitensile. You take two damage from the attack. Ouch! You take much more damage. You're not going to survive the battle. Decide to defend. Which defense will you use? Trepidation. You curl into a ball. I'm not cut out for this. Feeling vulnerable, Spork Monster prepares its ultimate attack. Rounded Edge. Vile villain, your reign of terror stops here. Colonel Sanders summons the energy of 1,000 chickens. <laughs> Hot oh my pop, power punch! <laughs> <laughs> Look at those lovely pectorals. Mm. Punch him. Pot Pie Power Punch does 10 damage. Spork Monster is defeated. You saved me. The injured Spork Monster spews steam into the night. Uh, let's see. 
be at mercy. Finish him. Spare this wretched. Hmm. Finish him. Are we doing the genocide route, or are we gonna are we gonna be the hero? Or are we a pacifist? Well, well, Colonel Sanders hate us. <laughs> We're trying to fall in love with him. I don't know. I'm, I'm gonna sure. spare just for the sake of Colonel Sanders. You managed to tamp down your disgust at the sight of this gnarly beast long enough to realize that he is still a living creature with a pure soul who deserves your pity, not your wrath. Be gone, beast! Don't you dare come back for a follow-up encounter tomorrow! I won't forget this, and I certainly won't be back like you said. The sport monster scuttles off into the night. The defeated monster left behind a special item. <laughs> Everyone was like, no mercy, finish him! Death to Spork Monster! Well, we spared him. It appears at first to be a cookbook, but upon closer inspection, it's so much more. It's a book of magic spells with a golden chicken on the cover. You open the cover and find a library card is tucked that inside. The, the chicken Namicon? <laughs> <laughs> the Poyo Namakon. The Poyo Namakon. <laughs> the last name to have signed it out is Borco? Hmm. Borco. That, that name sounds strangely familiar. Your blood is pumping as you stand in the quiet of the night, holding the mysterious book in your hands. As you come down from your battle buzz, you realize that your final attack was left you completely depleted. The world around you begins to fade away. Without any energy to keep your eyes open, darkness overtakes you. The image of Colonel Sanders flashes before your eyes as you fall asleep. He must have helped you get home in your tired state. I don't know if you could have made it without him. What a guy. You want to thank him, but you don't have the strength to utter a single word. You feel your covers being pulled up over you as you're tucked in tightly. All that southern hospitality. Good night, my colonel. In your dreams, you're together with Colonel Sanders. For uh -oh. some reason, Sprinkles is also there, instructing your love. Dreams are weird. I don't want to know what that means. Whoa. <laughs> and ghosts. <laughs> Everyone's riding the chicken. <laughs> Look at all those chicken Look at legs. all those chickens. You awake on day two and attempt to process the wild visions you had. Were they memories or premonitions? Mm. And then there was that secret ingredient that Colonel Sanders went ahead and told you outright. Not much of a secret, huh? It was boop! It's probably just because he already trusts you so much. Sure, that makes sense. We'll go with that. You meet up with your bestie in front of the school. Before you can tell her about the encounter with the spork monster, she launches into a story of her own. Okay, I know this might sound a little strange, but I think I might be, um... I think I might like Clank. <laughs> like him? Like, like, like? I know, it sounds like it's moving too fast, but there's something about him. I like him. Like, like him. <laughs> he got to talking after class, and he's actually a totally sweet guy. Not only that, but he's really smart. He told me all kinds of stories about Colonel Sanders. Did you know that Colonel Sanders was the most popular kid in his high school? No, but that does make complete sense. Yeah, but he's so popular that he uh, uh, that he was voted prom king at a school he didn't even go to. And he was also the convertible that he himself rode in at the front of the homecoming parade. So he can shapeshift too? I guess he's so. I mean, I guess if he can freaking All Might punch a monster, why wouldn't he be able to turn into a convertible? I'm thinking maybe something got lost in pressure cooker language translation there. Either way, maybe it'd be best if you took it slow with this new boy, like like I am with Colonel Sanders, you know? You and Colonel Sanders, the coolest guy in school, the most famous student to ever attend University of Cooking School Academy for learning, you're a thing now? We 
definitely connected yesterday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sure you did. You're great. Why wouldn't he be into you? I guess? Laughing at the implication that you and Colonel Sanders might be a thing is definitely not cool. You are great after all. Why, thank you, game. I don't get enough credit for that throughout my day. I appreciate it. <laughs> no, not really. JK, JK, don't hurt me! Ah! <laughs> well, if he's not into me, why did he tell me one of his secret ingredients? Hmm? Your bestie's eyes light up. A secret ingredient? Yeah, I just said that. A secret ingredient. Is there a dramatic echo in here? Miriam checks to make sure you're alone before continuing. Mm. So this summer, while I was on vacation with my family, a lovely man approached me in the biotechnical garden where I was wandering. This can't be good. He told me all about his passion for spices. Secret spices. <laughs> the man even gave me some to show me what he meant. Uh-oh. <laughs> She's getting dank. Uh -oh. He said it was a powder created from super duper rare dried flower petals. And that if I did him a big favor, I could have some of my own. <laughs> Come on and slam. And welcome, welcome to, to the, the jam. jam. <laughs> Please, Miriam, don't tell me. So I filled my suitcase with them and brought them home. <laughs> He was so nice, he even met me at the gate when I arrived. Later when I cooked with him, a very strange feeling came over me, and the flavor was unlike everything, anything I ever tasted. I think I started hallucinating. <laughs> I think you're very, being very liberal with the meaning of spices here. Whatever. Uh. Anyway, we both share an interest in cooking, so we stayed in touch, you know, like pen pals, and I bet he would love to know more about new spices. Well, I'm definitely not supposed to share Colonel Sanders' secret recipe. And besides, I only know the one ingredient, so I doubt it'd be much use to anyone. Please, please, please. <laughs> it would mean the world to me. No, ma uh, no one has to know it came from you or Colonel Sanders. What do you think? Should you protect Colonel Sanders' secret? Or share it with your bestie? Make up a fake ingredient. You quickly think of a fake ingredient name. I don't know. How about... Uh, it was Eye of Newt. I know it sounds like some kind of witch's potion. But what can you do? Eye of Newt? Wow. Her eyes light up, imagining such a thing. You figure that you've satisfied her curiosity, and she moves on. However, she immediately turns around and does some thumb typing on her phone that you can't quite see. That's probably not good. Before you can ask her to confirm that she was definitely not texting secrets to other people, you're interrupted. A wind rushes in. Cherry blossom petals fill the air. It's Colonel Sanders. He's arriving at school on horseback. Oh. Oh no. <laughs> my little Colonel, my little Oh my Colonel. god. Stand back and admire his majestic glory. Run to Run him. Run to him. <laughs> uh, oh goodness. Well, I don't know which one to pick. Shall we admire his majestic glory, or shall we run to him? I guess we will. Colonel Sanders' horse is truly a thing of beauty. <laughs> Without ever acknowledging that he's being watched, he does a short horse dance before dismounting with a flourish. Then he slaps the beautiful creature gently on its rear, sending it running free into the countryside. You're so struck by the sight of him that you lose the ability to speak coherently. Summoning the chicken gods. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't realize anyone was watching. Don't worry, he knows his way home. <laughs> Why do you pick the opposite of what I say? <laughs> Why do you go in the wrong direction? <laughs> you attempt to compliment Colonel Sanders, but the words don't come out exactly right. 
what a horseful butte you have. I mean, what a horseful butte you have. Dang it, that's what I just said. Being a good friend, Miriam attempts to cover for you. Oh, Sir Crespin just gets really nervous around people they like. What? This is not helping. I mean, they got food poisoning and were up all night. It was gruesome. You should have seen it. She gives you a wink and a smile as if to say, situation handled. Can't blame a girl for trying. And with that, Colonel Sanders disappears into the school, leaving you and Miriam to follow. When you enter the classroom, you can see your two rivals, Ashley and Van Van, are doing something bad. By the way they're hiding, you know it must be really bad. Like counterfeiting recipes bad, experimenting with restricted ingredients bad, summoning a demon bad. You try and get a peek over at Van Van's hulking shoulder. But he sees you coming. Ah! Whoa there, little one. I'm not sure you're ready to handle this. Ugh. All these abs. Why don't you make like a bee and mind your own wax, honey? <laughs> oh, God. You sit near the rivals, but leave your back turned to them. You even hear Van Van mutter something that sounds a bit like a magic spell. However, he notices you eavesdropping. You try and cover your tracks and improvise an excuse. <clears throat> It's time for class, and you're distracting the rest of us who want to learn. Now you've upset them. Uh-huh. Oh, and you're the emperor of cooking, are you? You make the rules. Uh, I'm not sure you'd know a good meal if it ain't you! Being the best chef in the world takes more than just culinary skills. It takes creativity. It takes panache. And it doesn't hurt to use a little evil. You finally get a look at what it was they were hiding, and you instantly recognize it. It's a book, just like the one you found after your encounter with the Spork Monster. That's the same book that I found last night in the quad. Ashley immediately elbows Van Van, who hides the book behind his back. Uh, I didn't know that you're ta- what you're talking about. This book is a family heirloom, and it contains contents are secret. Hmm. You notice they haven't just been studying the book. They've got Pop pinned to the wall and they're tossing potato skins at him as he tries to catch them in his mouth. We're playing. (laughs) God, he's such a weirdo. Before you can dig any further, you're interrupted by the arrival of more students. It's almost time for class. Beep, beep. I'm a sheep, beep, beep, I'm a sheep. Clank must be running late. He's in such a hurry that he rolls right over Van Van's meaty foot. Hey, watch it, you bucket of bolts. You watch how you talk to him. He didn't do anything. (sighs) Who do you think you're talking to? I've never heard such language. Not even from a stand mixer. (laughs) Womp womp. No, your mother was a stand mixer. (laughs) Van Van jumps to attack Clank, but Clank shocks Van Van, sending him flying across the room. (laughs) Protect me, Colonel Sanders. These crazed men are about to come to blows. I think it must be over me, but I'm not interested in either of them. Ashley's tone has completely changed in an instant. She bats her eyelashes at Colonel Sanders. Surely he must know that this is a ruse, right? Gentlemen, get a hold of yourself. Save it for the arena, at least. Or honestly, what do I care? I've got lofty career aspirations to focus on. Maybe I can help you with your business plan. Just then, Sprinkles arrives to, uh, to signal the true start of the class day. He's panting, which doesn't seem that abnormal. He's a professor, but he's also a dog. Students, please take your seats. I apologize for my late arrival. I spent, morning, uh, I spent the morning chasing a car all around town. My tiny legs are very, very tired. 
but I'm here now, and I hope you're ready to learn. Rub his furry dog belly. He loves it. After he catches his breath, Sprinkles regains control of the classroom. Without further ado, we'll review the global history of my favorite fowl, the chicken. You want to pay attention to the lesson. Truly, you do. Which is why, in 1776, at the signing of the Declaration of Independence, it was a chicken who first signed their name. But you can't help but daydream about Colonel Sanders, and you miss most of the important parts. Senpai! Oh, Senpai! Oh, I love your mustache and goatee combo! And you come to <laughs> Sprinkles is holding a tray of food in front of you. Well, Sir Crosspad? Naturally, this appears to you to be a sample platter. Which item do you want to sample? Uh, let's see. A glass of water, a shimmering pepper, or a dog biscuit? Um, a shimmering pepper? A brightly colored pepper stands out from the other items. It sparkles in a most eye-catching way. So naturally, you reach out, grab it, and eat it right away. Are we going to die of spicy? However, your body is not prepared for the heat. The pepper has triggered an intense spice hallucination. It feels like forever. You trip through the universe. My friend. Oh. This guy again. I'm here to give you an important message. Oh. You must avenge my death and fulfill your destiny. All you must do is... <coughs> I was saying to fulfill your destiny, all you must do is... <laughs> Sorry, I think I got some spice stuck in my throat. It's fine, I'll work through... <coughs> to fulfill... <coughs> the prophecy... <coughs> you must... You feel yourself begin to regain consciousness. Oh, oh man. Creeper. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Creeper, oh man. I'll bet you that is a, a reference. Yeah. <laughs> you come to and find everyone is staring at you. That pepper was the last of its kind on earth. And now it's gone forever. You think to yourself, geez, I should pay better attention. We all make mistakes. I'm sure he'll forgive you someday. Come on, it's time for lunch. Before anyone can relax, the cafeteria lights dim. And your rivals enter to make a dramatic announcement. Today's lunch will be prepared. Via timed competitive cook-off. The level of theatrics with these two is off the charts. Demand they stop wasting everyone's time. T step up and tell them, you're on. It's a bit of lunchtime competition, eh? Count me in. If I have to wipe the tables with you fools before I set my lunch down on it, then so be it. I'm not the fool. You're the fool, fool. Go on, Van Van. I like your gumption, Sir Crosspad. I'll be watching your performance. Senpai's watching me. Oh, Senpai. Just as, th as things reach a boiling point, Sprinkle steps in. Surely he'll put a stop to this madness. Now, now, students, please settle down. This is a lunchroom, not a sportsing court. Finally, a little sense. You breathe a sigh of relief. <sighs> At least not until we turn on the timer. Then, j just then, a huge light blasts you in the face, flashing the words, Timer ready! That's what I'm talking about! Aroo! I stand corrected. <laughs> the hard way builds solidly a foundation of confidence that cannot be swept away. And that's an original quote by me, in case anyone was wondering. I hope its message lifts you to victory. Like a diamond, I was formed under pressure, and now it's my chance to shine. I will defeat you myself. You had his chicken. You had his chicken, and you made mashed potatoes and gravy on day one. 
and you're feeling like you can really impress him again here. It's time to boil some water for the potatoes. Think fast. If the timer runs down, you'll be forced to pick randomly. Uh, okay. What temperature does water boil at? Uh, 100 Celsius. 100 Celsius. That's wrong. That's not wrong. That's not wrong. Water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. What were you thinking, Sir Crosspad? Get your head in the game! Maybe it picked for us? Maybe it did. You're going to need to season this chicken before you cook it. You don't know Colonel Sanders' recipe exactly, but you have an idea. Uh, 11. That's right! You must not know all of the ingredients yet, but at least you're headed in the right direction. Tail wagging intensifies! <laughs> now that you've got some basic steps going, it's time to elevate your craft. What state of mind offers the most flavor? Uh, gratitude. That's right! You must never take this opportunity for granted if you hope to succeed! Your classmates are rooting for you, but Ashley is simply stronger and faster than you. You'd better pick up the pace if you want to survive! When you were a child, your father told you to never forget you, where you came from. Every day you meditate on his advice and draw energy from that place. Now would be a great time to harness that energy, so where does it come from? Uh, small town where dreams are born? That's right. It's your shot. And you're not going to miss it. Arroo! You try to shut the noise out of the arena. Focus on your cooking. What is the sound of success? Uh, that's right. <laughs> what? When they taste your cooking, they will be so taken with it. They'll, they'll be unable to speak. You notice Colonel Sanders out of the corner of your eye. I believe in you, Sir Crosspath. He's actually cheering you on. Which would be awesome, except knowing that he's watching you make you totally forget what you were doing. Now all you can think about is Colonel Sanders. How many spoonfuls of gravy would it take a fill the trip? Oh my gosh. <laughs> what were you thinking? Get your mind back into the competition. <sighs> You're stranded on a desert island with only one desert cookbook. Which do you take? What a hunk! <laughs> oh my god! Ah! Oh my god! I mean, this his shirt is just like hanging off. Herbs and spice, smash! I know, right? You know what? You shouldn't be focused on chal on on the challenge. You're falling behind. Sorry, I forgot the question. Ah! We have to do with crafting spectacular fried chicken and delicate baked biscuits. Woo woo! You're really struggling to keep up. At the next station over, Ashley has already begun plating elements of her dish. It's colorful and complex. To make up time, you toss your biscuit dough in a stand mixer. As you do, the crowd gasps. Eh, uh, yikes. I know you love nothing more than seeing a few appliance utilized in the kitchen battle, but sometimes that means sacrificing the personal touch. You might not have any hands, but Sir Crosspad does, and a good chef needs to be touching the dough and know when it's properly mixed. There's an easy way and a hard way. You don't get far by going the easy way. When you hear everyone talking, you realize how serious your error was. You immediately shove your hand in the, into the mixer to rescue your dough before it's... Sir Crosspad, no! <laughs> but you're not fast enough. And your hand gets stuck. Oh my god. It's immediately crushed by the quickly spinning beaters. There's no way you'll be able to use that hand for the rest of the match. Colonel Sanders shakes his head and shakes. Yeah, no one rescues you while your fingers get torn to shreds. <laughs> what the heck, dude? What you often find is that the easy way can turn out much, much more difficult. Everyone, stop what you're doing right now. This battle is over. It can't be. I was so close to finishing my dish. Sweetheart, look at your hand. You simply can't go on. Aw, too bad. And here I am with a completed dish, ready to serve. Surely that makes me the winner by default. No, no, it wouldn't be fair to compare the two. On account of Sir Crosspat's injury, you see Sprinkles begins to lick his doggy chops as he locks onto the dish. But I suppose you should at least tell us what you prepared. Well, 
because I'm the sweetest, I skip straight to dessert. Under the white chocolate dome, you'll find a wide array of delights, taking on a journey of flavor that tastes good and tells a story of excellence. I was going to ask Sir Crosspad to do the honor, but since you're injured, I'm afraid that pouring this creamer of delicate hot chocolate sauce might be too difficult. Colonel Sanders, if you wouldn't mind lending me your strong, steady hand. Colonel Sanders pours the hot chocolate sauce on top of the dome, causing it to melt away, revealing the ingredients hidden within. Inside, you'll find a delicate fried cheese cro cro uh, what is that? <laughs> croquette. Okay, inside, you'll find a delicate fried cheese croquette atop a slice of honeycomb, ice cream two ways, tender nougat, and pearls of blueberry jelly. Colonel Sanders seems intrigued, but perhaps not impressed as he dips his finger in the chocolate sauce. Hmm. Simplicity isn't your strong suit, is it, Ashley? <gasps> oh, you. <laughs> as he places... Sorry. As he places a sauce-covered finger into his lips, Ashley leans over and whispers something into his ear. A dab of sauce sticks to his mustache. Put yourself between senpai and the thought. <laughs> you reach out with your apron and wipe the sauce off his glistening face. Colonel Sanders recoils and brushes you back. This goatee isn't just a fashion statement, it's also functional. I was saving that for flavor later. Oh, that's not sanitary. What the heck? Game over? What? No! Oh, we always pick the wrong choice. First two times was deliberate, we'll admit. But, I don't know. I didn't expect... <laughs> we got too forceful. We got too eager. Okay, well... Okay, we'll just... Okay, uh... uh we're just gonna uh, flip through all this, because we've done it already. Okay, so... We're gonna have to pick the right answers? 100 degrees Celsius. Yeah, we just didn't click it the right at the right time this time. 11. All right. Uh, gratitude. Uh, small town where big dreams are born. And then silence. Uh, I believe in you, Sir Crosspath. Oh no. Just hope we pick the right one, I guess. Woof woof. Next station over. Ashley has been begun plating. Ah, yikes, Blarg. Oh no. Don't put our hand in the oh, hand no. mixer. Okay. Ow. Oh god, that That's cracking noise is sound. horrible. It's the worst. That's that. Hold on. Hmm. Simplicity isn't your strong suit, <gasps> is it, Ashley? Okay. So internalize the rage you feel. Your rage burns so intensely within your eyes that they burst into flames. The flames cause your eyebrows to catch fire and turn to ash. They fall off your face, which means people will have a hard time understanding your emotions for the rest of the semester, perhaps forever. Embarrassed and ashamed by your poor performance, not to mention your crispy fried brow, you run to the quad to be alone. His face. What the heck? <laughs> the beautiful weather feels like an insult. Inside of you, a storm rages. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. <laughs> <laughs> it's Colonel Sanders. He's probably here to tell you that he and Ashley are in love and have decided to get married. And he won't even ask you to cater his wedding because you're a terrible chef and an awful person. You try to hide from him, but he approaches you directly. I know you're hurting right now. Not just from the devastating loss, but from that run-in with the mixer and that small fire. We should get that checked out. I'm fine. Can't you just leave me alone? I'm a loser. I'm not fit to fill your fryer. I'll never be a master chef! Failure is a part of life. Now, not just for you, but for all of us. Do you think I've never failed at anything before? That's exactly what I think. Well, think again. 
I wasn't always the man you see before you. Enrolled in culinary school, incredibly handsome, successful, motivated. Well, handsome, sure. I was born that way. But I've walked other paths and arrived at dead ends. I was passionate about life, but I, fa I failed as an obstetrician. I was passionate about justice, but I failed as a lawyer. I was passionate about livestock, but I even failed as a mule handler. That one was especially humiliating. Mules can be so cruel. I didn't know. People see my delicate ribbon tie and my well-kept beard and assume that I've got it all together. Which is true now, but it hasn't always been. Sounds like this guy could really use a hug. I resolved then that I was going to amount to something. No amount of hours, labor, or money would deter me from giving the best I had to give. As Colonel Sanders char changes focus, you can see something in ignite inside of him. A burning passion. One has to remember that every failure can be a stepping stone to something better. My new dream is pure. It's honest. It's something that a humble man in a crisp white suit can be proud of. I will create a new chain of chicken restaurants that will bring joy to the entire world and make up for my past misdeeds. Yay! Just as your moment grows intimate, you're interrupted by a threatening shadowy presence. Battle scarred from the night before, you prepare for the worst. It's the Spork Monster! Borko? It is I. I know I said I wouldn't be back, and after the whole fight to the death thing, maybe you don't really want to see me anymore, but I just wanted to say that I was wrong to attack you, and I apologize. I know that it's like having to always look over your shoulder. Monster problems, am I right? Aw, thanks, Borko. I'm glad there are no hard feelings. Getting jumped by a giant creature in the dark night can really rile a person up. I also want to apologize for the way I switched right into attack mode. I know you're strong, and cooking school can put a person under a lot of stress. I was actually... I actually used to go to this school. I wasn't always a spork monster, you see. I don't believe it. You were a human once? Well, no. I was a golden retriever, but I was still a student. Until one day, some mean kids with a magic spellbook cast a dark enchantment on me, and I was forever transformed. A magic spellbook? Precisely. I had procured a copy for myself, but somewhere along the way, I lost it. If you find such a book, I beg of you, respect it. You're a powerful chef and shouldn't rely on such dark and evil magic. No, you should be protecting the innocent from those who would cheat them through sorcery and guile. If you need me, don't fear. I will be there. It sounds like there are some bad cooks in the kitchen of life. Sir Crosspad, together I'm sure that we can defeat them. Come back to my hideaway and we can discuss. A personal invite? You can't imagine what Colonel Sanders' home must be like, but it sounds like you're about to find out! Stepping inside Sanders' home surrounded by his things, you start to feel a special bond with him. It looks like you live such an exciting life, Colonel Sanders. Every day can be an adventure if you approach it with the right attitude. Long ago, I made the decision to never stop searching, never stop working, never stop imagining. Have you been working on any new recipes of your own lately? I'm always excited to talk about food with another ambitious chef. Well, there is something. It's just a side dish that I've been tinkering with, trying to find the right balance of flavors and textures. I'm not sure I've nailed it yet, but I'm close. Colonel Sanders' eyes perk up 
as he starts to wonder what dish you might be describing. I love how the music is like, like Titanic. Romantic. Yeah. It's like, every night in I hope my that's dreams. Not, I, I, I hope that's not an urn of ashes. Because it kind of looks like an urn for ashes. Yeah, it does. Doesn't it? That's creepy. It's meant to pair with something spicy or something crispy. Both, perhaps? Now you've got him right where you want him. Should you reveal your new creation to him or keep it a secret just for you? Reveal it! Bear your soul to Zempai! You decide that, you, that you're as ready as you're... You decide that you're as ready as you'll ever be to share your original cooking with Colonel Sanders. Before you can talk yourself out of it, you decide to dive in head first. You reach into your lunch bag for a special dish that you've been keeping on ice all day. I present to you my original coleslaw. The shredded cabbage dish glistens in the light of Colonel Sanders' looks hiding. <gasps> what was that? <gasps> <laughs> Together you chow down on the creamy slaw until just a spoonful remains in the bowl. <clears throat> Don't you mind if I hold on to this last one? I'd like to have it around so that I can admire its taste later. Think back to this moment. Good night, Felipe. Have a good night, Felipe. We appreciate you. You could offer, you could offer to make him more, but he seems like a very sentimental kind of guy. Sure, why not? Please make yourself comfortable. I'll be back in just a moment. Realize that now would be the perfect time to do some snoopy. Around the room are various items that you can look closer at. Each item seems to radiate memories and emotions. Tap on an item to discover more about the colonel. Huh. You notice a very realistic stuffed chicken sitting on a corner table. When you pick it up, you realize it isn't just realistic, it's real. What the heck? Taxidermy? Must have been important to Colonel Sanders when he was alive. Or when it was alive. <laughs> He's not dead. He's not a ghost. <laughs> a little note clipped into the chicken's foot reads, The true state bird of the great state of Kentucky. Tap on an item. Is this just like telling us facts? It seems that way. You gaze out the window across the vast lake and mountain range beyond. Just then the ghost of the student pops up. Are you thinking about heading out into the world on a quest to avenge my death? Wait, what? I've never even learned your name. Why would I avenge you? I could just tell you my name right now. It's, uh... Can't you see that I'm in the middle of something? You open the window and crack and... <laughs> you open the crack. Anyway, you open the window, a crack... And the ghost of student is swept out with a breeze. Tap on an item to discover more about the colonel. Take a closer look at a large urn sitting on a nearby pedestal. There's a plaque on it. It's dusty. But when you wipe it off, you can read the inscription. It says, Here lie the ashes of all my past careers and businesses. Poor guy. Tap on an item. So many items, senpai. It's then a candle. You pick it up and try to identify the smell. Power tool? <laughs> Ew. Freshly starched collar? Piece of wood floating in a lake? Summer of 69? <laughs> no. It's one of the secret recipe ingredients. It's poop redacted. It's redacted. Tap on an item. Uh-oh. The door opened. You open the door to Colonel Sanders' closet find a row of his signature white suits hanging within. You take one off its hanger and try it on. The jacket is a bit big for you, but it's soft and comfortable. You give yourself a deep hug, breathing in its scent. They say that home is where the heart is. Is this what they meant? Before you can look any further, you hear Colonel Sanders returning. He has a new dish that he's been working on. He wants you to taste it. You try to act casual until he asks you why you're wearing his jacket. I don't usually loan those out, but I must say, it does look good on you. Oh crap, the jacket! <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, I just tell him I'm cold. 
I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to intrude. I just got a little cold and thought this might warm me up. Colonel Sanders smiles and scoots close to the fireplace. Yeah, he gets freaked out if you're, like, too close. <laughs> too forward. <laughs> Fulfy Wolfy! Wolfy Wolfy says, to be honest, he be finger looking good. <laughs> he be looking finger looking good. <clears throat> it's warm. By, it's warm by the fire. Do you want to? Why don't you come a little closer? Whoa, closer to Shempai! Suddenly everything feels like it's moving too fast. Final exams are tomorrow. You should be thinking about what you're going to cook. I should be home studying. Overwhelmed, you take off the jacket and run for the door. But the thought of leaving the colonel in the midst of such an emotional breakthrough gives you pause. You stop yourself. Colonel? Hmm. Yes, sir, Crosspad. I honestly think this may be the beginning of something wonderful. I think you're right. We should take things slow. You talk late into the night and drift off into a slumber. Dream sequence! This is adorable. Whee! If this was not KFC, I would want that as my screen. <laughs> Whoa, we stayed the night over at his house. Uh oh. Scandalous. <laughs> it's getting <laughs> spicy. <laughs> you awake to a beautiful morning in Colonel Sanders' hideaway. Did you make the right decision on how to respond to Colonel Sanders? Only time will truly tell. Today is the day that could change the rest of your life. Think about the new secret ingredient you just learned about. Boop! In some jurisdictions, boop isn't even legal. But if the recipe no, is secret, okay. how will they know? <laughs> um, uh, um, it's a secret. <laughs> your thoughts are interrupted when Colonel Sanders emerges into the room. He's holding a gorgeously plated breakfast, and your mouth waters at the sight of. Here is a simple breakfast I just whipped up. It's ridiculous. Uh, biscuits and chicken. That, this he's gonna eat. No, this is for the rest of your life. If you marry this man, <laughs> you will get nothing but biscuits and chicken. That's it. Nothing else. No chicken and waffles. No, no, no chicken gravy. No, no chicken and dumplings. Just <laughs> the biscuits secret and Krabby Patty formula. <laughs> you taste Colonel Sanders' food, and it takes you on a journey. When you return, he's waiting to ask you an important question. So would you say that we're the perfect match? How presumptuous! My cuisine in your taste buds, that is. Such confidence, such grace. Could he be the world's greatest gift to cookery? What did we say? I didn't read it. We, he just, oh, he agreed. We oh, were like, okay. oh, we flattered him. Ah, gotcha. You know, I think we might make a great team. A single tear begins to pool in the corner of his eye as he gazes out the window. With the right business partner, I know I can't fail. Business partner? Could he be talking to you? It's all happening so quickly. Overcome with emotion and confused by your feelings, you're on the verge of tears, unable to speak. The only answer you can find is to run out the door and get home. There's still one more day of school, after all. The University of Cooking School Academy for Learning waits for no one. You get home to find something very surprising. Your best friend is there waiting for you. Where have you been? I... <laughs> because I had one heck of a night. I've been desperate to talk to you about it, but I couldn't find you. I got worried that something had happened to you. It's okay, I was just... But now that it turns out you're fine, I can finally get you to speed on the saga... I can finally get you up to speed on the saga of Miriam. Sure, but... Uh... I you mean, will not believe what happened to me after school yesterday. I went on a date. I think I can believe that. Since I've been partnered up with Clank, he asked me to go out with him. Of course I told him, you better keep your dials turned to polite and respectful. I'm not that kind of girl. <laughs> but he was just interested in spending some one-on-one -on -one time together and getting to know me. So I said, yeah, sure. I can get to know the little metallic guy. Long story short, he took me skydiving of his friends, but things quickly spiraled out of control. 
Did she just say skydiving as if that's a typical first date to go on with a talking <laughs> robot? I f I, I'm getting flashbacks of Miu and Kibo right now. <laughs> if you don't know what we're talking about, go ahead and check cool. the cards. We'll put some Danganronpa stuff up there so you can find out who Kibo and Miu are. But now I'm not sure what we're where we stand. You don't give Miriam time to tell her whole story, however. Bottling up the details of your own night. It's just too much to bear. And I went on a date, too. Back to Colonel Sanders' house, where I spent the night with him. You what? <laughs> nothing, ha that nothing happened but the emotional connection. Wowzers. Wowzers. I suddenly turned into Inspector Gadget. It's being obsessed with Colonel Sanders is wrong. You don't want it to be right. After a short argument, you both agree to go your separate ways. When you arrive at school, you encounter your rivals in the quad. Mm. You can tell from a distance that they're picking on Pop, though he himself might not quite grasp that fact, because, you know, he's Pop. What's a swirly? It sounds delicious. <laughs> Oh, it's great. I'll order you up one right away. I'll have my swirly with sprinkles, please. <laughs> sprinkles is a dog and a treat. Oh. You can get your swirly dips, too. Why don't you pick on someone your own size? Because I'm literally the biggest person in this school. There is that horse that Colonel Sanders, Sanders rides to school. But who would dare pick on such a gentle and beautiful creature? Ugh. You've got some nerve, Sir Crosspad, suggesting I pick on a defenseless horse! Now you're twisting my words, and I won't have it. You clench your fist, but the injury from yesterday's mixer accident makes you wince with pain. Doesn't look like you can go on cooking like that. Might as well just give up. I'll never give up. Ever! Colonel Sanders arrives just as it appears things are close to boiling over. A naturally intuitive person, he senses that something has been going on. Is everyone excited for the final day of school? Sir Crosspad, how's that hand feeling? I'm sure you'll be back in fighting form by this afternoon. Aren't you concerned about my hands, Colonel? Yesterday I almost broke a nail winning so hard. Technically, I don't believe a winner was decided, but your presentation was quite impressive. What is he doing complimenting her? But what about the flavor of my delicate, warm, gooey chocolate sauce? It was clear that you're passionate about how your food is received. That's a lot of wor that's a that's a lot of words to say it was bland. Excuse me, Sir Crosspad. I am more than capable enough to speak for myself. Uh -huh. Maybe you should tell me more of your thoughts as we walk into class, Colonel. I'm always interested in discussing the f disgusting. <laughs> I'm always interested in discussing the fine art of fine foods. See you inside, Sir Crosspad. Annoyed by Colonel Sanders' inability to see Ashley for who you know she really is. You walk across the co the quad in something that I couldn't read. To get read. some distance. To get some distance. In an attempt to distract yourself from how slighted you feel by that interaction with Ashley, you take out the spell book you recovered yesterday and start flipping through the pages. Wow, that's a book? It looks like bad news. It's just something I found lying around. It would appear to be some sort of grimoire, but... I don't really believe in that magic stuff. A grimoire? Like a book of spells? I don't know. Who would spend so much time decorating a magic book if it weren't really powerful? I can think of one surefire way to find out. You open a page covered with arcane warnings. Cast only in case of extreme emergency, it says around the edges of the page. I could use this spell here that says it will erase anyone I choose from all of my memories. If I scrub out all, uh, Colonel Sanders, it would probably help me focus better on the upcoming final exam. That is way drastic. Couldn't you do something else, like anything else, not rooted in dark magic? Maybe tie a string around your finger. Okay, fine, it is drastic, but desperate times call for desperate measures. 
You've got a memory erasing spell sitting right in front of you and a pretty good excuse to try it out. Ooh, are we gonna cast the forbidden spell? Or don't do it after all? Curious. <laughs> Rogue wants to cast a forbidden spell. Okay, we're gonna die, everybody. See ya. You begin to recite the spell, but you stumble on the words, and the only effect it seems to have is to make you forget what it is that you're what? Doing. Doing. All right. After looking at the page again, it comes rushing back to you. You've got a memory erasing spell sitting in front of you. You're pretty good at excuse to try it out. Something about this moment feels very familiar. You take your friend's advice and put the book away. It's almost time for class. Okay, it was a non-choice. <laughs> Sprinkles is already in the room waiting for the students to arrive. He clears his voice to make a quick announcement. <coughs> I want you all to know I feel something of a dog moment coming on, but I assure you it's nothing to be afraid of. His cute little nose scrunches up and he begins to breathe quickly. Oh! You reach into your backpack and grab some old homework from last semester that you forgot to turn in. Sprinkles immediately goes for it and gobbles the sheet of paper like it's a piece of fresh chicken rawhide. <coughs> I apologize for that outburst. I know it seems cliche, but not much in this world satisfies the un like ungraded work. My eyes are cross pad. Were you studying something with cinnamon? I've been sitting on a lecture series around the art of cake baking. How insightful. This actually brings up an important point. Thank you, Sir Crosspad, for reminding me to dole out this indispensable bit of wisdom. You see, but before he can go any further, Miriam's love drama spills over into the class. I told you to save it for after class. You think I wanted to be thrown from a plane strapped to a stranger? Miriam and Clank appear to be arguing, but you still haven't learned to speak Clank's language of mechanical noises. But no! You had to show off to your cool kid friends, Jeff and Jo- Joanne. J and J forever. Watch us from a triangle in midair as we descend. Triangles are the strongest shape, don't you know? Bzz, bzz. Yeah, well, that doesn't make it a great date. Then take Jeff and Joanne with you. You can all hold hands as you pedal down the mountain or off a cliff for all I care. Clank begins to shudder. Steam pours out of the gaps in his panels. And then a loud ding stops him in his tracks. Ugh. Oh, is he dead? Is Clank dead? I guess he is. <gasps> no, Clank. Ah. Sorry about that. <laughs> no amount of seasoning is going to make me want to eat that, Clank. Clank burps out a completely deep-fried sneaker. Considering that he himself has wheels, not feet, it's not entirely clear where it came from. In terms of deep-fried footwear, I guess it looks okay. I guess... Clank slowly rolls out of the room to be alone with his shoe. Everyone tries to pretend like they didn't see that entire thing go down. Mm. Nothing like a loud public breakup to cast a pall over the final day of school. Well, that was unfortunate. But we mustn't be distracted from what lies ahead. The final competition showdown challenge exam. I'm still working on the title, but I think you get it. Test time approaches. See you in the arena. But before you can think about your upcoming competition, there's a very beautiful soul nearby in need of a pep talk. Hey, Miriam, are you okay? Uh. Okay, I'm so mad I could smash a tiny mug, spilling several droplets of hot cocoa all over the floor. How can he embarrass me in class like that in front of everyone? Her tiny cocoa is a delicious treasure. So you know that this breakup is no joke. Even if the source of her frustration is a silly boy. I know that you know this, but I'm going to say it out loud. You don't need anyone. 
me and you, we're gonna cruise through this final test and hit the carpool lane to Success City. Miriam brightens up, imagining the wind rushing through her short bangs, but she hesitates to embrace the feeling all the way. <laughs> You're not going to saddle up on Colonel Sanders' stallion and ride off into the sunset without me. Of course not. Well, maybe, sort of. But I'm sure there's a pony out there with your name on it and a ranch big enough for both of us and whoever else we want to bring along. If it's not Pop or Clank or anyone else you meet today, tomorrow or this whole year, so what? You're a special person who shouldn't settle for the first someone to show a little interest anyhow. Miriam gives you a big hug and wipes the tears from her cheeks. I should really review my menu today. I'm going to make a very special soup. And I bet that Professor Dog is going to love it up. While you were pep-talking Miriam, you completely missed lunch. But that's okay, because you had a better idea of how to spend the time with something. Before your exam. Before your exam. We decided to hear the arena early to practice a dish. To head to the arena early, goodness. This is it. The location of your final challenge. A test of will, a test of courage, a test of talent, and a chance to beat the pants off of Van Van, the supposed man-man, and his eviler counterpart, Ashley. As planned, you begin to run through a quick test of a recipe you've been working on. Sir Crosspad's famous chicken pot pie! After practicing for months, making this dish comes second nature to you, and you're able to quickly get a fresh pot pie in the oven. But as soon as you do, your cram session is interrupted by Colonel Sanders. <laughs> Sir Crosspad, what are you doing here? There's still time before the final exam. Oh, just taking it all in. I'm big into visualizing success. I'm looking at uh, I'm looking I'm looking at my station and picturing victory. The pot pie has begun to bake and the smell is slowly filling the space around you. Hmm. Visualizing, huh? Too bad. I was hoping you were cooking something delicious. You'd usually happily share your food with anyone who's hungry, but the last time you let Colonel Sanders get in your head, it cost you a cook-off. You decide that it's time to put your cooking above your romantic desires, but that decision gets hard to stick to when the oven timer goes off behind you. Ignore it like there was no sound at all. Fess up about your practice dish. Okay, okay, you got me. I'm doing a little bit more than visualizing. I know my nose can smell a pot pie from 400 yards. That's an oddly specific distance, but you'd expect nothing less from such an oddly specific man. You knew it was a pot pie just from the smell? Not just a pot pie, but a chicken pot pie with an all butter crust. Now my nose is telling me something else. Oh no, is it burning? <laughs> No, I can smell that it was made with a heapin' helpin' of TLC. But it'll probably start burning any second if you don't pull it out. The moment of truth. Wow. Oh, it's the best pot pie I've ever tasted. I've always loved country cooking, and I could eat this all day. There's no time left. The final showdown is about to begin. Sprinkles lays down the ground rules. There are no rules, that is, except to cook with everything you've got. You step up for the cook-off of a lifetime. You decide that mac and cheese plus the pot pie you've been practicing are just the dishes that'll push you over the edge to victory. Meanwhile, both Van Van and Ashley are prepped, are prepping wildly elaborate dishes per their usual over-the-top selves. Miriam has her giant magnifying glass and several sets of tweezers. She's definitely prepared to go big going small. <laughs> Colonel Sanders seems to be harnessing his 11 herbs and spices, but he's trying to find a way to improve on something perfect. His original recipe, fried chicken. The intensity in the room starts at a full 10 out of 10 with a frenzy of action. Everyone's calling out really cool special cooking moves as they prepare their food. Wow, this is getting serious! Colonel Sanders batters his chicken as it levitates through the air. Egg wash! 
<laughs> I'm sorry. I've met people who talk like that. That was funny. Miriam furiously injects ingredients into an itty bitty pot of broth. Best friend, Baster Blaster. Van Van flexes his pectorals as he chops open a sea urchin. Let's rock and roid. Yeah! Ashley scoops her pastries off the tray with lightning speed. Shallow personality spatula. <laughs> Even Clank gets in on it. Five dial pressure point chicken cooking technique. Wait, when did Clank learn to speak English? <gasps> it's the singularity as was foretold. We mustn't let it happen. Or the appliance uprising will take us all. Self dister. Van Van quickly unplugs Clank and rolls him to the back door of the arena. <laughs> As you frantically prepare your dish, you notice Ashley has her spell book out. Is she going to use some dark magic to turn the tide? You've got a book of your own, and you're desperate not to see her win another battle. Should you take this opportunity to fight magic with magic, even if it's almost certainly evil magic? Uh, the easy way is never... Yeah, yeah do, the, do the, it hard the hard way. way. Who needs magic when you've got passion? I'm going to do it the hard way. Colonel Sanders sees that you've chosen to win over, uh, on your own terms, and he gives you a subtle wink from across the room. I believe in you, Sir Crosspad. Miriam notices too. Aww. And I've always believed in you, Sir Crosspad, since we were little kids, because I'm your first best friend forever. You turn to notice that Miriam is at your, at your station cheering for you. Miriam, what about your dish? If you're here cheering, who's cooking? Tiny food, sure cook time. I'm actually already done, so I thought I'd help you. Oh, that's sweet, but... Miriam tosses a handful of spices directly into your, into your boiling noodles. Uh -huh. It's the secret ingredient! However, she doesn't know that you lied and the ingredient was made up. And where in the world did she get Eye of Newt from? Oh, no! The boiling pot explodes, sending Miriam flying backwards. The watery noodles begin to swirl in the air, bubbling up into a dark cloud that thickens and congeals. It is I, Steve, the Spork Monster. Steve? Wait, what happened to Borko? You're not he here to battle me, are you? We Spork Monsters are many, but I think Borko has the day off. But you might have conjured Steve, and I hate to battle. So I say you're doing pretty all right. Oh, hey, you're in the middle of, co of a cooking competition? I love this stuff. It's better than TV. You crazy kids and your culinary skills really impress me. Mind if I hang out? I'm sorry, Steve, but I'm kind of in the middle of something. Do you mind? Steve the Spork Monster notices that you've got the grimoire stash beneath your cooking station. I see what you're up to. Chris cost some magical items and accidentally summoned me, huh? <laughs> yeah, you guessed it, sorta. If you're here, would you mind tossing some fresh noodles in a pot of salted water? I'd love to. I've always wanted to be a top chef, actually. You know, when I was just a little sport pup back in the old country. You can feel the spork monster winding up to tell a very long and involved story. You don't know exactly where they came from, but it seems like it was probably lonely there. Actually, you know what? Maybe you should watch from the stands. I really need to focus on this competition. <clears throat> I understand. It's kind of like that time in monster school that I'd fallen asleep during scare tactics class, and that when I woke up, you toss a serious stare at Steve, and he takes the hint. Get out of here, Steve. Never mind. I'll tell you later. Good luck! Having suffered this huge setback, you don't know how you could ever win. I can do this. I have what it takes. I came here to win! Your hair turns mac and cheese orange as culinary energy flows through your body. We're going Super Saiyan, guys! <laughs> <laughs> My heart is pure. My hands are steady. My taste buds have been preparing their entire lives for... Yes, Sir Crosspad, you are the chosen one. You will avenge me. The power you'd been summoning immediately fades back out. 
You interrupted my inspiring monologue. Sorry. My heart is pure. My hands are steady. My taste buds have been preparing for this their entire lives for this moment. I will show you the world of my cookery. You begin to levitate off the ground. <laughs> Energy courses through your body. You know that with this power, you can do anything except turn back time, which would be super useful because while you are powering up, your chicken pot pie overcooked in the oven and can't be served. But don't worry, dear Sir Crosspad. You may have suffered some setbacks. But all is not lost. Impressed with your fortitude, Colonel Sanders decides that you've earned his support. I've been watching you today, and I must say I'm truly impressed. You've been thinking on your feet and rolling with the punches. He steps up to your station and stands right beside you. I'm here to help. All you've managed to do is make mac and cheese, and time is almost up. You're going to need it. But Colonel Sanders, what about the test? What will happen to you? What about the rules? Following the rules has never really been my thing. I follow my heart. What a guy! Colonel Sanders unfolds a delicate white towel to reveal the most delicious fried chicken tenders you've ever laid your eyes on. And besides, sometimes unexpected combinations can have surprising effects that surpass their individual efforts. Are you suggesting if we combine forces we can form the perfect food union? Time up, students! The time expired the moment everyone has been waiting for. You must now prepare to present your dishes. A handful of students stand tall, but the class seems incomplete. It seems we're miss- oh. It seems we're missing some students. Pop? Clank? From off screen, you hear a pure and innocent giggle that can only come from one student. Hehehe, <laughs> I'm flying! <laughs> what? It sounds like it's coming from that broom closet over there. Miriam, would you mind? Inside of the closet, you see Pop hanging on a broom hook by the elastic of his underpants. Oh, God. Pop, get down from there right now! Let me guess. Did Van Van have something to do with this? When someone asks for a wedgie, who am I to refuse? I thought a wedgie was a salad! <laughs> It looks like Pop is eliminated from the challenge, seeing as how he didn't cook anything. I can't feel my legs. May I be excused? Sure. You kids and your pranks. I must say it's not the worst prank in UCSAL history, but it's not exactly yearbook material. Wait a second. Pranks? Pranks. Clank! Where did that pressure cooker roll off to? wait to hear a signature whir, beep, or other onomatopoeia, but there's none. Somehow he must have gotten unplugged, I guess. We'll have to figure that out later. That leaves only four remaining students. Please collect your final projects. Yes, it has been a long semester. Wow, three whole days long. But after days of hard work, the time has come for me to eat. Miriam, please step forward. Now describe your dish. I've made tender udo noodles in savory soup. My word, it's so delicate. Is that teeny tiny uh, narutomaki I spy afloat in this itsy bitsy bowl? Yes, chef. Please call me Sprinkles. Chef is my father's name. Yes, Sprinkles. And some green tea made from baby tea leaves that I picked myself. Sprinkles carefully sniffs around the dish before opening his mouth and letting just the tip of his pink dog tongue dip into the bowl. Sublime! Would anyone else like a taste? Oh, come on. I'm not one of those dogs who doesn't floss. I even have a really cute electric toothbrush for dogs. Fine. I'll enjoy it all by myself. And in a flash, the entire meal has been devoured. Not that it took much. It was less than a thimble's worth of soup. A plus. Rarely do I taste a dish with as much love poured into it as yours. Miriam is overjoyed. She gives you a huge hug. Thank you, Sir Crosspad, for helping me to believe in myself. Van Van, you're up. Hey. 
Now describe your dish. I made uni over smooth egg custard in an axe-hewn urchin shell topped with caviar. Did you skewer one type of urchin with spines from a second different colored type of urchin? Yes, sprinkles. A bit much, don't you think? That's exactly why I did it. A bit much is kind of my brand. Doesn't it look cool? Sprinkles leans in to sniff the uni, but he can't get his nose close on account of all the spikes. He begins to paw at it erratically, causing the custard to slosh around. Woof! Woof! Please be, be, please be gentle with my cuisine! <sighs> Finally, Sprinkles goes all in, tongue first, but he can't get past all the needles. He reels back as his tongue is poked and prodded. Ouch! My tongue! The professor appears to be having an allergic reaction to the sting. I can't eat this. It keeps poking my tongue. Disqualified. A stunning turn of events. Who'd have thought that serving food in a bowl made of needles could make it difficult to eat? Dejected. Van Van does not go to does not go gentle into the night. Disqualified for glamour. Don't. Don't discount simplicity. This isn't the last you've heard of me. Before forcing us to endure his swollen tongue for another moment, Sprinkles graciously laps up a bowl of milk. I know, I know, yeah, I'm a dog and I drink milk. Get over it. Sometimes it helps calm my agitated tongue. Next student, Ashley, it's time to step up. Now, describe your dish. I made orange blossom Turkish delight in a light rose water syrup topped with French meringue and connected by sugar glass. That actually doesn't sound too bad. Indeed, it's quite delightful. However, I'd like that you please refrain from eating it or attempting to taste it in any way. It's very fragile and meant to be a display piece. Don't eat the food at a cooking school? Got toast in your ears or something, Sir Crosspad. I told you, it's a display piece. Ashley, I must say, it is beautiful. However, this is a cooking competition at a cooking school. Yeah, which is why I cooked it. And I did an extremely good job cooking it, too. I didn't realize that we were having an eating exam. If I wanted to be judge on eating, I'd go to the College of Eating School. School for the hungry. Uh, I suppose you could smell it if you're absolutely insisted, but don't breathe too hard. You might disrupt the sugar spiral. If the food cannot be eaten, it cannot be judged. You are disqualified. Rage overtakes Ashley, and she finally cannot keep her two-faced routine up. You wouldn't know Hyatt Cuisine if it cooked you. And with that, Ashley storms off to be re to rededicate herself to being the best, but this time without being shackled by trying to be fake nice and linked by everyone. Liked by uh, everyone. Liked by everyone. This isn't the last time you've ever heard of me either. If this class gets much smaller, I'll be teaching myself. You, uh, you and Colonel Sanders, the final cooks, step up together. Two chefs. What began as a bowl of delicious mac and cheese has become something uh, has become something else. He examines it closely, sniffing and eyeing the bowl. Uh-oh, I don't have a good feeling about this. From somewhere in the room, a literal drum roll plays. Just when I thought I've seen everything in this kitchen, you give me this this thing. A complete and completely blow me away in my 49 dog years of life I have never tasted anything so delicious and perfectly balanced it's so delicious in fact that everyone passes the glass you pass you pass and you pass and you get a pass I'm Oprah now <laughs> and everyone gathers around the partakers of mac and cheese bowl they all seem to transcend this reality into another dimension. You win. Together, and c together, you and Colonel Sanders have made a new menu item. 
The new menu item is so impressive, even Van Van and Ashley are drawn back in by its magnificent fragrance. When they gaze upon your mac and cheese bowl, they admit that you are indeed an excellent chef. Sprinkles declares that you have passed. Everyone has passed. There were supposed to be more battles, but come on, how could they be better than this one? Now that the school year is complete and everyone has graduated, the students return for one last assignment to get their groove on! The cafeteria has been completely redecorated in order to serve as the site of the school's graduation dance. Compared to the massive high-tech cooking arena, the humble de decor seems downright cute and cozy. <laughs> DJ Dog is in the house! Ow, ow, ow! You knew that Sprinkles was a master chef, but also a world-renowned turntablist? Who says you can't teach an old dog new tricks? Van Van and Ashley tell everyone that they've committed themselves to righting the wrongs they did while they were v the villains. And not wearing clothing. <laughs> For a moment, you actually believe them. Not another haunting. No ghosts allowed at graduation. It's clearly written in the school's bylaws. I was never actually a ghost. It was all a trick to get you to finally notice me. Oh, amusing. And now that everyone is together, it's it's the spork monster. He totally mellowed out. Everyone, the spork monster is no more. From here out, I prefer to let everyone refer to me by my new name, Party Monster. Student tries to finish what he what he had to say, but everyone is too wrapped up talking to Spork. Sorry, party monster. Dejected, student walks off. Maybe things didn't work out for Miriam romantically, but she found the love in her cooking, and you know she's gonna do great. A red carpet rolls out across the floor of the ballroom. It's like a Hollywood movie premiere. Who could command such an entrance? It's Pop. He's arrived late to the dance, but apparently for a good reason. While walking the carpet, you see perched atop his dirty chef's hat. A crown? Welcome back, Pop. I know you weren't able to complete the final exam and accept your diploma, so we had it mailed directly to your father. We figured it was the least we could do for the school's dean. Oh, now I get it. And we get a new wing on the school, not to mention the honor of educating the son of the chancellor of whatever that country was. The music at the dance is interrupted by the sound of, spar uh, of sparking and electrical hissing. Oh no, here comes Clank. It's Clank who has arrived late to the dance. Now that I have graduated, I can reveal my truth. Whoa, he's still doing the talking thing. I am Clank. And I am not of this earth. I am actually from a faraway planet in another dimension. What? What? Hmm. I actually feel like I knew it the whole time. Now that I have learned the ways of your kind, I must return. Miriam, will you come with me? I don't know what to say. Besides, no, obviously. I have just begun to learn who I really am. This is the time for me to devote my life to figuring out who you are, Clank. You're blown away by Miriam's maturity. It's pretty clear that she's managed to surpass you in that regard. I understand, kind of. Humans are weird. A portal opens up and Clank disappears through it. Finally, Colonel Sanders arrives. Howdy, classmates. Just like the first day you met him, he's come prepared to feed the entire class. However, it's not enough to just give him a bucket of chicken. This time, it's a full meal. I didn't get to be the most famous chicken man in the history of chicken and man by not reminding people to go out and buy my chicken. <laughs> the end? Question mark? Oh, I thought we were going to see some abs <laughs> <laughs> we wanted to see colonel's shirtless glistening body in the sun we are disappointed no it's not the end as everyone feasts on the delicious chicken dinner colonel sanders finds you sitting at the edge of the dance floor. sir crosspad 
What are you doing sitting alone? Oh, you know, just waiting for the right person to ask me to dance. I wonder, might you tell me, what are the qualities that you would expect to find in such a lucky person? Off the top of my head, uh, I don't know. A spicy musk, a tidy goatee, a degree from the University of Cooking School, Academy for Learning, just to name a few. Oh, it truly is my lucky day. Would you dance with me? Yes, I would love to, Senpai! Ah, I win! I win the affection of <laughs> Senpai! Ah! As you glide across the dance floor, hand in hand with Colonel Sanders, the future stretches out in front of you. And once my 100th franchise is up and running, I'll be ready to take a day off. And I'll be glad to spend it together with you, Sir Crosspath. How sweet. We'll work together and play together. Colonel Sanders stops dead in his tracks. Work together? Well, um, I think this is something I'll just need to do my, by myself. But who will help you run your restaurants? I don't believe I need help. Besides, based on your time at school here, do you really think running restaurants is the best path forward? Could it be you found a love connection but failed to earn Colonel Sanders' respect as a chef? You live with only half of him? Will you be able to endure sharing him with his other love? The life of an entrepreneur? I suppose I could enroll at pastry school. Oh, my dear Sir Crosspath, I'm sure that you'll find your place eventually. And along the way, you'll have me by your side. The end. Was that like a neutral ending? I don't Did know. Did we fail our senpai? Ugh. Well, I don't know if you guys want to find out if there's a different ending, but maybe we'll do some. But anyway, that was I Love You, Colonel Sanders, a finger licking good dating singer. What'd you think, Rogue? Um, it was better than I thought, and I did enjoy it, but I'm not too fond of all the marketing <laughs> at the same time. Yeah, it, it is what it is as far as that's concerned, but uh, with that, anything you want to say to send them off, Rogue? Don't forget to siege the like button and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next stream. A toodle!